So in this short video, what I'm going to explain that why partial mole is typically triploid. It can be tetraploid also, but typically it's triploid and complete mole is typically diploid. The first thing that you need to understand that the mole formation, the molar pregnancy is a result of abnormal fertilization. It's an aberrant fertilization. But the way the aberrant fertilization occurs that differs in the complete mole and incomplete mole. Uh, if I want to explain this, if I go into the whiteboard to explain this, I would like to explain it this way. The difference is this. The difference is that in complete mole, what's happened that the, an empty ovum can be fertilized by one sperm or by two sperm. Uh, and that occurs in two cases. Like, let me draw this for you. So suppose I'm talking about the complete H mole. Complete H mole, definitely H mole is a result of abnormal fertilization, I told you. And abnormal fertilization, what's occurring in the complete H mole, that there is an empty ovum where there is no contribution, there's no genetic material, DNA material in this ovum. That can be 90% cases, that 90% cases, what would happen, that that can be fertilized by one sperm and as a result this sperm reduplication of its chromosome occurs reduplication of its chromosome occurs so suppose this is 23x this reduplicate, so 23x plus, 23x means x included in the 23, plus 23x. So altogether there is 46xx. So this 46 entirely 100% is coming from the father, nothing from mother. So out of this 46, if I check, entirely 100% is from father, 100% is from father contribution and 0% is from mother because the ovum is empty. The ovum in case is empty. So what is going to happen in 90% cases, as I mentioned, 90% cases, either there is one sperm fertilizes an empty ovum and that sperm reduplicates its chromosome. So it was 23X, it becomes 23 plus 23, 46. That happens in 90% cases. In 10% cases of complete H mole, what can occur that an empty ovum, an empty ovum can be fertilized by two sperm. That is called diasperm. That is also possible in the complete H mole. Suppose one is 23X, another is 23Y and mother's contribution is zero. This is zero. So here what would happen that 23X, 23Y and plus zero, it would be 46XY. So the reason why complete H mole is deployed and partial mole is triploid I'm going to talk about partial mole because complete H mole, the fertilization occurs of, a, of an empty ovum. And that does not occur in incomplete H mole. Incomplete H mole, the ovum has DNA, genetic material, which would be understanding the list. The, right now, I'll be explaining this. So complete H mole is deployed because mother's contribution, chromosome DNA contribution is zero. And either one sperm, it reduplicates so 23, multiplied by two, it becomes 46 or two sperm in 10% cases, two sperm fertilizes. So 23 plus 23, it becomes 46. So outcome is either zero plus 23 into two is equal to 46 or zero plus 23 plus 23 is equal to 46, but maximum it is 46. So it would be always typically deployed, complete H mole, what we see typically deployed. Now, if we come to partial H mole, if we come to the partial H mole, the story is a little bit different because partial H mole, the ovum is not empty. The mother's contribution is there. So this ovum, there is 23X. And in this case, usually what happens that they become fertilized by two separate sperms. So again, it could be 23X, suppose, and this is 23Y. 
So in this case, what is happening? 23 plus 23 plus 23 is equal to 69. So 123 is actually coming from the mother and the other 46 is coming from the father out of this 69. So father's contribution out of this 69%, father's contribution is two third. Two third. That means equal to 66.66%. And mother's contribution is 33.33% of the DNA genetic material in cases of partial H mole. And that's why partial H mole, as you are getting 23 also from the mother, that's why it is not diploid, but it becomes straight triploid. It can be sometimes straight triploid also because this one of the 23 can reduplicate also. So then it would become another 2392. And this concept is tied with another very basic important concept that you need to understand. That why this with this concept, you can also explain that why in complete H mole we get no fetus, but in partial H mode, we at least get some fetus information. The reason for this is this, that normally what is expected that when the fertilization occur, that father and the mother, there be one is to one ratio of genetic material contribution, DNA material con contribution, one is to one, 50%, 50%. But in cases, and another important concept that you need to understand it here, that father's DNA material contributes to placental development. Father's DNA material contributes mostly to the placental development. And mother's DNA material mostly contribute to the fetus development. Now I would tie all this concept together. So let's think about the, let's think about complete H mole. Complete H mole, what do you get? Complete H mole, what do we explain? Complete H mole, what we get that 100% DNA material in 46, 100% DNA material is coming from father and 0% from mother. And I told you right now that in this abnormal form of fertilization in complete H mole, 100% DNA material is coming from the father. And that is resulting in abnormal parental growth because Ultimately, H. pole is basically a placental disease, placental disorder, where there's abnormal, uh, abnormal formation of the placental tissue is growing at the expense of no fetus development. Because in cases of complete H. mole, there's a 0% contribution of the mother. And I already told you that mother's contribution is basically crucial, the material is crucial for the fetus development. So that's why in complete H. mole, as there is 0% contribution from the mother, that's why no fetus is developing, but only no fetus development is seen actually. This is not viable, the fetus development. 100% there is only from the father and that's why there is a placental tissue developing. If we think about the partial H mole on the other side, the story is a little bit different. In partial H mole, what I am seeing, 66.66% DNA material is from the father and father's one basically contributes placenta growth DNA and 33.33% is from the mother. And mothers, as there is some contribution from the mother, that's why some fetus development is occur, but that is malformed fetus mostly, that is not viable. So that's, and that is the reason why some form of fetal development can be typically seen in partial H mole, but that is not seen in the complete H mole. So that explains this concept also. So what I told you that basically H mole is a placental abnormal, it's a placental disorder, it's a placental disease. And both H mole, partial and complete, they're a result of abnormal form of fertilization. But the abnormal form of fertilization differs. In complete H mole, the abnormal fertilization is due to, abnormal fertilization is due to the fertilization of an empty ovum by either one sperm which is reduplicating his chromosome material, that means 23 becoming 46, or by two separate sperms. That is also possible in complete H mode. So net result is zero from mother and 23 plus 23 or 23 into two from father. So total it's a diploid in the cases of complete H mode. But in cases of incomplete H mode, the ovum is not empty. So mother is contributing 23 chromosomes. And as a result, 23, 
And in incomplete HMOL, what we are getting that there is a typically dice spermy. There are two sperms fertilizing that one ovum. So 23 from mother and 46 from father, altogether it makes triploid 69. So in other words, if I make it even crystal clear that in complete HMOL, there is 0% DNA material contribution from the mother, that is genetic material contribution from the mother, nuclear DNA material, and 100% from father. And in incomplete HMOL, 66.66% typically in the triploid one is from the father and 33.33% from the mother. And that also explains why we see fetal tissue in the incomplete HMOL and why we do not see in the complete HMOL. So that is the key concept that you need to understand. And I think this short video crystal clears your concept that why the complete mole is deployed and why the partial mole is triploid. So that's all. Thank you very much for joining.